Hello, welcome to another MapleWoodian.com podcast reporter roundtable. We are a roundtable of two this week, but uh, as exciting as ever with Philip Sean Curran from the News Record. Philip, how are you? Joe, doing well. How are you? Good. And also, we always want to give the plugs, MapleWoodNavigator.com. Right. And pick up your News Record every Thursday. I usually don't have to pick it up because I get it mailed to me, but I was actually at the train station... Well, I had to go in the city on Thursday, so I actually picked up a copy, so they got me to buy two this week. And it is also in the easy-to-read uh, tabloid format now. We talked to uh, Christina as the managing editor recently, and that, I think, has, has made it all even more easier to handle and read. So, it's just not tabloid journalism yet. No, you know, the tabloid, I use that phrase because I used to work at editor and publisher, and in the newspaper parlance, the phrase tabloid is strictly for the way that it's formatted, like an opening of a book as opposed to the traditional newspaper. And unfortunately, yeah, some of the newspapers like the New York Post have given tabloid a bad name, but News Record brings it back to a good name. <laughs> but let's start talking about a lot of things. Uh, before we went on here, we were going over some issues. Um, I think, to me, the one thing I was following this week was the Tuesday elections, which Kathy Leventhal and Jerry Ryan, who are running for re-election, ran unopposed in the Democratic primary, and of course Barack Obama ran unopposed, essentially, so people might not have cared to vote for those camp, uh, candidates, even if they liked them, and of course they all won that primary. Uh, but we did have two interesting races. One was the 10th congressional seat, which had six candidates running, including Donald Payne Jr., who ran and won to replace his father, passed away in March, and Ron C. Rice, son of State Senator Ron Rice, who did not win but had a stronger showing among the challengers. And, of course, Mayor DeLuca endorsed him. Um, what did you find in that race? I mean, I always joked that a lot of people might have, I wonder how many people thought they were voting for Donald Payne Sr., and there really wasn't much of a, of a fight there, although he had a lot of candidates. And it was, it is Maplewood's congressional seat that had really been locked up by pain for, you know, several decades. Well, <clears throat> I, I think, you know, the, um, just to sort of touch it at one at a time, you know, the Township Committee race, as you said, was unopposed. Uh, right. Jerry Bryan and, and Kathy Leventhal actually only have one Republican opponent. Yes, and he ran unopposed. And he, he did, and even though there are two seats, so uh, essentially one of the incumbents is guaranteed to win, and, and the Republican hasn't won in Maplewood since the early 1990s, and there's been no sign that trend is going to change any time right. soon, even though Art has uh, lived here his entire life, close to 70 years, I believe. And uh, the the if there is any residual effect of the crowded primary for the congressional seat was it did affect sort of the composition of the district leaders of the Democratic Party. Um, the candidates had different slates for different district leaders, people sort of on the ground type of races, and actually the Kathy Leventhal was running for her district leader in, the, in, in her part of town and wound up losing to um, someone running on this other, uh, one of the opposite slates, and there was that was true in another contest, so there were some, um, some changes there. Right, and we spoke with uh, Ian Grobman this week about the district uh, Democratic committee that essentially votes on who to endorse and does other work for the party in Maplewood. They have 21 voting districts in Maplewood, and there is a Democratic leader. Uh, there are two Democratic leaders for each district. And, 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 and uh, oddly, the the rule or the policy has been a man and a woman in each one, which is kind of interesting. But well, was, to your yeah, point, actually, uh, for people who don't re know, um, Kathy Leventhal was also a district leader, as is Vic DeLuca and Ian Grodman. And I know Kathy lost her seat and another uh, veteran district leader, Marion Rabb, who um, is also, I know her as a Tuscan parent, she lost by one vote. And Ian Grodman himself was challenged pretty uh, severely, he told me, and apparently he kept his seat, and I believe DeLuca also kept his seat. Yeah, actually, it was, um, in, the, in that case, the mayor was running with his wife, uh, Janie, and actually he beat his wife by one vote for that district leader's seat, so... Um, 
He was running. What do you mean running with her? They were both well, running were, for the two seats. He had a man and a woman for each district, and uh, they were running on the same uh, little. Uh, so they are both. They are the district leaders for their district. Correct. Interesting. Uh, in that area of town. I didn't know that. They both live on Lexington Avenue. Has Jackson. she been? Has she been uh, on the? On the. Had she been a district leader before this, or was this her I, first? I want to say uh, I'm not to be without being 100 percent sure. I just want to say yes. She actually. Um, he got 72 votes to her 71. So. Very interesting. But yeah, to see Kathy Leventhal basically win unopposed for her township committee seat, right. and I'm looking at the votes, she actually got about 52 more votes than Jerry Ryan, and there were 19 write-in votes, which is always interesting, but for her to win uh, pretty decisively, even unopposed, and then lose the district leader seat, that's kind of, kind of interesting. Odd. Yeah, but nothing is unusual nowadays. Um, but that shouldn't really seem to affect. I mean, is that any comment on her situation or? Hmm. It's hard, it's hard to say. I mean, yeah. she's, she's actually um, running for her fourth uh, consecutive term. Right. And um, she's, she's been there now for nine. Going, this is her ninth year, and she's going for another three. So it's, she's actually turning out to be one of the longest-serving members of the governing body, at least in recent memory. Yes. So um, we, we'll we'll see. Now, was it odd that she? lost to someone who had been uh, on the Ron Rice slate. Again, without having And then the mayor is was supporting Rice. So was he that, that opposing enough. her in district leadership? I, I wouldn't think so. But Again, I, I, at the risk of not having... I, mean, I, I didn't really cover that race so, right. so closely just because there was really no, no contested primary yeah. uh, in, in the two towns for the... For the, in the, excuse me, in Maplewood for the township community. Right. So that's uh, so we will have another a pain in office, um, and he'll probably be pretty safe in that seat because it's a pretty safe seat, and they have a good organization there, uh, barring any unforeseen well, circumstances. Well, right now, if I recall, he's um, he's a city councilman. Yes, he's Newark city councilman. Holder, and now he's um, going to Congress. So he's going to have to give up something, give up a couple of those other seats. So I mean, to the extent people follow. Newark I, think, or, or I think he'll be council. glad to give up the Newark council seat <laughs> to go to Congress. But, yeah, that'll mean that Newark will have a, a, a race to fill. And, 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 now, and as I understood it, this election actually had two elections. There was one to fill uh, Donald Payne Sr.'s yeah, unexpired term, term, which means that Donald Payne Jr. will take the seat pretty immediately then, Correct. So that's what I understand it. And then there was another there was another election to to run in November in the primary, which he also won. So in, in essence, he will take the seat sooner. Right. And then if he wins in November, which is likely, then he uh, begins a new term. So uh, I don't know exactly. Uh, yeah. Joe, I don't really know exactly when he's being sworn in for uh, to fill out the unexpired term of his, his late father, but. Um, and actually, the, the congressional seat is for both towns, in fact. So South Orange, uh, yes. which was formerly represented by Bill Pascrell, yes. when the redistricting was done, he uh, he lost South Orange, and, and he was uh, and Don Payne uh, became the representative there. Right, and Pascrell had his own battle for his new seat, because New Jersey lost the congressional seat in the with the, with the uh, Actually, two congressmen were running for the same seat yeah. in the district. Um, okay, so let's move on to another I issue that came up this week. Um, property tax assessments. And yeah, the, um, the long and short of it is that um, in the past two years, there have been, and I just want to double-check my numbers, but close to 900 appeals, um, and actually the exact total is 889. That's just with the county tax board, so people who have larger uh, assessments um, like the country club they can appeal directly to the county um, tax court but anyway so you, but even for the most part you have residents who are appealing their tax bills and to the tune of close to 900 of them in, the, in, the, in this year and last year combined that's uh, when there's successful appeals it affects the town's rateable base mm -hmm. which has gone down by nearly 14 million dollars in the past year and this is you're talking strictly maplewood or maplewood and in south maplewood, no, yeah. this is strictly Maplewood. Um, so they've had more than 900 assessment appeals tax in the appeal, last... Tax appeals. Right, in, in the last two years. Twelve, correct, combined. And how much is that uh, higher than usual? I don't know. I wouldn't be able to say off the top of my head what's an average number of appeals in a given year, but... But um, it is on the increase. 
it would, this year was just astronomically yeah. high. Astronomically high. And we'll advise people you are going to have a story on this. Yeah, yeah. Coming up, so we want to make sure everyone tunes sure. back into Maplewood Navigator, and we will link to it when it comes up. Um, but you said the the uh, town the township committee this week. They hired did something um, on this. Hired a firm that will uh, be responsible for uh, revising the numbers. It's actually the same firm, Appraisal Systems Inc., and they have offices in different parts of the state. But this firm will um, update the numbers. It's mm -hmm. called a reassessment, not a revaluation. So right. there's not people going to be in your house doing measurements. Oh, no, please. Things. We've had enough of reva revaluations. <laughs> so they'll be relying on the sales data um, to, take a, uh, to update the numbers, which would go into effect for 2013. So, but they're, you're talking about they're only reviewing those who have appealed. No, no, no. The, no. the reassessment is going to be for the entire town. So right. essentially, people are the numbers are going to change for everybody, uh, commercial, residential, um, and even the numbers would probably be, will, will likely be changed. Will be changed for even people who don't even pay tax, like churches and things like that. There's, so there's, why are they doing this now when they just had a revaluation? Well, again, it is because of the assessments. Uh, the right. mayor uh, had a chance to interview him briefly after the meeting on Tuesday, and he called it, quote-unquote, an offensive, uh, quote, end quote, maneuver by the town to do this, to stem the flow of these tax appeals, stem the tide. Um, you know, obviously he... So they will take what the revaluation they just did and take that data and reassess and it? Well, they're going to they're gonna update it. Uh, I see. Completely update those numbers for, for everybody. And that's going to be starting... Yeah, that won't they, the numbers won't be on the books, so to speak, until next January. Just to give you, I mean, just to back up one step, please. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Joe. I was just going to say, you know, in terms of that that total we just mentioned about all the tax appeals, in 2011 there were 325. Oh, so it's definitely year, a lot higher. Three this year, 564. So when you sort of look at the sum total, it's 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 very high and uh, it's substantially more than it's been in the past. So would the thought be this reassessment will be to stop some this appeals? Stem the flow. Yeah. Stem the flow because obviously you know people's the idea between behind these things is to sort of bring them in line with the market value. Right. Um, now, so would most people market, see a likely a tax reduction or increase or is mixed bag? I think bag? It really like, like with the revalue. I think it might just depend. Um, yeah. Just as a quick aside, they did hire, like I said, they did hire the firm, so they're spending $60,000 on this. Um, the money is going to either come out of just uh, surplus monies or monies from the sale of the uh, former police headquarters on Donnell Road. So we're paying how much? $60,000. $60,000 for this review, this yes. reassessment. Reassess reassess but that could very well mean lower taxes for some and fewer appeals. I think the, the, the goal, I think, is the, is the appeals, the appeals issue. Um, and just to not get bored, bogged down in the minutia, you know, these if you're a property assessment for someone who might look at the tax bill, that that's based how they calculate how much you're going to pay in county, municipal, and school taxes. So um, in Maplewood, the, most of your tax bill, about 58% or so, close to 60%. Yes, most of it goes to the school, yeah. And the rest is divided between the county and the, and the, and the municipality. Excellent. Okay, one other thing we want to look at is the pool. Speaking of uh, township costs, although, as we know, the pool is self-sustaining. But I've been following some things about this where the pool had a major renovation. Um, it had a very big renovation, actually. And it was delayed, but then there was talk of going to the country club for some of these pool parties. The mayor worked a deal in which the country club would cover hold the pools and we would use this construction fee to cover the township cost and the PTAs would cover it with their uh, a, a fee they normally put that would be a little higher. And then now it turns out the pool is going to open June 16th yep. for longer hours than usual. I, we just found out 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. That, that Saturday and Sunday. And all the school pool parties and a good number of other pool parties that were going to go to the country club are now going to be at the pool. What what is the well, just to sort of this. Walk, uh, walk us through it, essentially, yeah. uh, in October, the work started on what mm -hmm. would be a million three, a $1.3 million renovation to add a, a double slide, a handicap ramp, ramp, excuse me, uh, redecking the entire pool. And, and just, just to be clear, it's, it's, more, it's better to think of it as a pool complex. There's more than one pool there. Um, Wait, you're sounding like a, a promotional person for the township here. 
<laughs> no, I'm kidding. You're right, and it's going to have a it's going to have the great new slides, which I know my great, kids are great excited slide, about. Yeah. Uh, for for kids and and people who act like so kids. So it's definitely a well a well uh, timed renovation, new slides, and we've all written about the 30 percent pool fee hike that's right. going with it. Um, but I think most actually, of that is 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 pretty uh, pretty worthwhile in most cases. But go well, ahead. And yeah, I was going to say the um, so the so the pool actually um, has a grand opening the ribbon cutting and all that on the 16th. They're actually the first the first group that's going to be using the pools this weekend as the Girl Scouts for an event. Um, and the pool season, well, you, as many people pool know, runs from the six, June 16th to the 3rd. And um, the town actually, in its calculations, anticipated there would be a, a slight drop-off in pool membership. Because of the higher rates? Uh, yeah, because yeah, of the higher rates. That makes sense. Um, they're hoping that it's a wash. Uh, last mm -hmm. year, there were around 7,000 membership, which members, excuse me, which run the gamut from adults, seniors, kids, you know, half-season membership, et cetera. So they're they're um, they're they're optimistic they'll be able to to get to that number again this year. But they didn't, as a as a for its purposes, anticipate that there would be a five percent drop off because of the rate increase. And. Do we know what happened with, I know one of the indications was the delay was because there was a problem with a handicapped element, and then I talked to one of the pool committee people who had said they thought that the company that did the renovation was just, be, it was just had, had, was supposed to have it by a certain uh, time in April, and they were delayed. Um, do we know what happened to, to speed things up? I, actually, I'd have to follow up. Be honest, Joe. I'd have to follow up with what, that. Um, my understanding is that the project kind of went. Kind of, I mean, that it went through. There was a mild winter, so that shouldn't be an issue. But I can definitely. Yeah. I was going to follow up. We're planning to have a little story or a story coming out this week. Ah, very good. So, um, but we'll try to get to the bottom of that. Okay, and then reminder: we're talking to Philip Sean Kern of the News Record and MaplewoodNavigator.com. We'll just go into another quick item. Um, is that the meetings are going to be held out of town, not out of town, out of town hall. Right. Because of air conditioning, we, I think I wrote about this a couple months ago, and you wrote about it as well when it was announced. But now the next meeting is, what, June 19th? Right. They're going to... Uh, and that'll be at the police station, the new police station? Right. It's going to be in police headquarters starting the 9th, 19th, excuse me, and then... For the all the, the two meetings in July and the one meeting in in August and potentially even into September, but that'll depend on you know how hot it is. But um, I was speaking to uh, one of the people in town. All this is sort of like the first time, in, at least in recent memory, that a uh, the meetings are not going to be in that building. Um, so, and possibly longer than recent memory in the last twenty or thirty twenty five years or so. so yeah, bit of an interesting quirk. I hope I don't make the stupid mistake of driving there, you know, by road to. Uh, at 7.30 and seeing no one around, but, um, you know, folks can go to the police headquarters and watch their government action. The meetings will be televised, so that's not going to be an issue. People are still watching on their local cable TV channel. Now, what is the cost of holding meetings in these different places versus the cost funny. of having air conditioning? Why why doesn't the chamber have air conditioning, or at least... Well, it's actually a ni it's an older building, and I'm, yeah. I'm actually trying... I was actually going to hopefully... Um, as you say, now as you say that, I was hoping maybe to, to get the details on how much it costs to um, configure the, to add, put the technology in to ensure that the meeting would be televised in the police headquarters. They actually, um, Joe, years ago they had talked about that building being for that purpose too, to have meetings there. In, I hear that's true. When they built the new police station, that's true. Yes, a few years ago now. Actually, the building is when we say it's a new building, it actually opened in 2008, so it's right. four years. It's four years older. So, and the I know the the. Uh, the municipal court area has a good a good amount of seating, and uh, you could you could hold meetings there without a, a big problem. You know, there aren't a lot of summer meetings anyway, right? Isn't there only once a month or something? There's, uh, they can't. They don't have two meetings in August. Yeah. They have two meetings in July. Yeah, so they don't have that many meetings. Uh, were they going to have all the meetings in the summer there? Or were they going to put them it's somewhere else? It's actually going to be through through. Starting with this one, all the meetings in July, the one meeting in August, and potentially even in September. Um, but that'll with September one. That, as far as yesterday, that was still maybe a little bit up in the air. Okay, great. Well, we also we wanted to touch on two quick crime-related notes. Uh, well, actually, three. I wanted to mention uh, the St. Joseph's uh, Church attack, where a woman was badly beaten on March 14th. 
Um, that has remained very unsolved. The man was found in the morning. Um, I actually heard it on the scanner at the time and wrote about it, and uh, the woman was very badly beaten, and uh, that's been almost three months. Nothing has come of it, and now the sheriff's office has put it out as one of their Crime Stoppers reward uh, tips. $5,000 reward is now out for information that would lead to his arrest. And um, two other things, uh, maybe you can touch on those, the two uh, murders that have uh, court uh, proceedings occurring this week. Yeah, there was, as uh, maybe some people, are, many people already may know, that um, there was a trial in the uh, murder of, uh, there was a trial in a man charged with the murder of the transgender uh, model who was right. shot to death in 2010 in September. Um, that person, Al Rasheen Chambers, was found not guilty by a jury after uh, a trial there in Newark. His co-defendant who testified against him and implicated him in, uh, was um, sentenced to time served. He actually had been in, in the county jail since 2010, so it's been almost two years for him. So he mm -hmm. was found, that was yesterday. Um, and that, in some sense, means the case has been is unresolved. It's sort of, uh, you know, someone someone killed that woman. Uh, yeah, and the, and, and the logic would, would seem to indicate it was one of them. <laughs> because you have the they two men were there. They had the gun. Yeah, and one of them testified against the other, apparently not well enough. Um, I used to cover courts a lot, and I know you never know what a jury will do, and I wasn't in the courtroom the whole time, so who knows what was heard. I got, and, but the, you know, the, 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 the gay rights person and the transgender rights person in me gets a little irked by this kind of thing because you've got to wonder how much the, woman, the woman's sexual past, uh, sex past, I shouldn't say sexual past, but changing of, of sex from male to female right. indicated this. You don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say the jury did just something, the, but... The back, the back story is the the victim was formerly James White. He actually, yes. um, James attended Columbia High School. Yes, that was another link. They, I think you guys tracked that part down. That was a great link. At some point in his life, yeah. he, he uh, had a sex change operation yes. in Asia and then became Victoria Carmen White. Um, and... The, the, the tragedy of it is that Victoria Carmen White met these two guys. Uh, they went to they were at a club in Newark and then came back, not Newark, excuse me, Irvington, came back to the a cousin's apartment in Maplewood on, on Jacoby, Jacoby, right? And yeah. um, was shot and killed in September of 2010. That basically, just the trial was that the two defendants essentially implicated them, each other, they, you know, implicated you know, the other. Um, the defendant um, testified, so did. Um, so did the uh, Marquise Foster, who was the co-defendant. Um, so, in some sense, uh, there's been no uh, resolution of the case, and there won't be since you keep, there's no double jeopardy. Yeah, that's I don't know. It's just something something doesn't smell right in this case because uh, unless some one of them knew of someone else who had killed her, but right. that's the jury system. Um, and then the other case. Um, talk about that one that's going to go to trial. Well, the, other the other murder is, a, is, an, is an earlier murder, also in 2010. Right um, the, on Henry Street. It was Henry uh, Henry Place. Henry Place. My, 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 and the my, um, the defendant in that case actually pleaded guilty. His name is John Statton. Um, the backstory to this is that he and the victim met um, through what was what's been described as a telephonic chat room. Mm. Uh, the two they had sex. Uh, the victim was a man. They had sex at the uh, victim's apartment there on Henry. Um, he killed uh, John Staten, killed and has pleaded guilty to killing the victim. He uh, put a bag over his head, and hit him with an iron, and then um, while he was dying in there in the, in the apartment, he eventually the Staten fled with the guy's car, the victim's car, took some other property, and there were plea talks going on. And essentially, he took a deal uh, that calls for him to receive an 18-year prison sentence. That's Later this year, later this month, excuse me. He's done time in the, in the county jail already, so he'll get credit for some time served since 2010. But essentially, he's he's going away for a long time. Very sad, but at least people are being caught, if not always convicted. But uh, that is the that is the jury system. That is the uh, uh, crime in investigation. In case people are interested, in case people are interested in, in the Dwayne Florney case, that case is still pending. Um, I haven't, I'm not aware of any developments. I'll obviously be checking on that, but he's the, he's the guy who 
right killed the, the grandmother and the yeah the, uh, the it, father. Apparently, it looks to be an adopted. Yeah, that was another interesting situation. piece that came out. That was on uh, which street? I don't recall the one head, but essentially that was right around as the St. Joe's tech you mentioned uh, right. referenced a little earlier. That case is pending grand jury. Or uh, and I'll double check. But what's really interesting, Joe, is a quick final point on this. Sure. Um, the lawyer who represented um, Alvar Sheet Chambers, who had just found not guilty of the trial, is also representing Dwayne Florney. Interesting. Um, and so it's uh, it kind of interesting. We sort of uh, noted that when I was speak, when I would speak to him in the courtroom for this other case in the, in the Victoria Carmen White homicide, he we just sort of he kind of mentioned that to me. So um, he knows his territory. Oh, and another thing we should say in all these cases, I don't think there's any indi- there is no indication in each of these three murder cases uh, of any kind of danger in Maplewood. These are all people who knew the victims, knew their killers, or alleged killers, um, and in several cases from out of town. So it isn't as though you know this this is any reflection on on Maplewood being dangerous because of these situations. They all indicate that they were crimes related to people who knew other people and would not be any kind of threat to the general public uh, or any indication of a, of a danger level growing in Maplewood. So that's important to note. And uh, I think that'll do it. So thank you, Philip. Sean Kern of the News Record, maplewoodnavigator.com. I, I, feel, I feel without Mary here. Joe, I feel no, like without Mary. No, listen, and, uh, we're, we're, we, we put out the word to Patch. They're, I guess, still trying to fill her shoes, which is very difficult. Mary Mann is now uh, an editor uh, so she's joining the uh, you know the other side, as it were, from us reporters. Although I guess I'm an editor too on this site. Um, but yeah, she's she's doing great things at Patch in Union County, and uh, an associate editor. And I think Patch here is is doing good coverage and trying to nail down some some permanent changes as happens. But uh, we'll keep talking and uh, maybe we can get some other voices from other news outlets uh, along with. But we appreciate you guys being with us and, and the news record still doing great work. And again, at maplewoodnavigator.com. And are you on Twitter? I believe, uh, the, uh, I'm not personally, but I believe there, uh, I'd, have, I'd have to double check because I hate to sound like I'm so um, a dinosaur still uh, in the print media world, but I'd have to double check. But I know they're on there because I do follow them. So if people go to Maplewood Navigator or News Record, they can, I think it's News Record if you put News Record into the Twitter machine it'll pop out the way to follow because i do follow them um so that's very good thanks again philip and everyone uh keep uh, reading the news record keep reading maplewooding.com and uh we'll uh, be back again probably in a week or so so thanks again Thank philip you, Joe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.